Voilà, on est en direct, vous pouvez commencer. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this public meeting for a proposed amendment to the Corporation of the Town of Hawkesbury official plan and an amendment to the zoning bylaw 2020-2018 on this uh, Thursday, September 29th at 7 o'clock. For reasons of quorum, I will be called, I will be calling upon the councillors. Mr. Churunakis. I'm present. Mr. Bogue. I'm present. Mr. Shamayal. Present. Uh, Mr. Afed. Present. Mr. Paquet. Present. Mr. Campbell. Present. Thank you. So we have one. So item one is the um, opening of the meeting. So I need a proposer and a seconder. Proposed by Mr. Tulunakis, seconded by Mr. Campbell. All in favor? Adopted. Item number two, uh, adopting the um, agenda. I need a proposer, seconder, proposed by Mr. Lefebvre, seconded by Mr. Campbell and all in favor? Therefore adopted. Conflicts of interest. Any declaration of conflicts of interest? I hear none. Item number four, it will be the uh, amendment of the official plan and the zoning. I will now let uh, Mrs. Calvigny, uh speak first. And um, then we'll listen to the representative of the uh, developing. Thank Please you, proceed. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Mayor. So I will share my screen to present a quick report on to explain the project and uh, what has to be changed for it to be realized. So. Uh, this public meeting is a requirement under the Planning Act to listen and hear the comments of the public and receive them. Um, the proposed uh, amendments to the official plan and zoning bylaw 2020-18 uh, is uh, to request, sorry, <laughs> is to change the, the designation of the, the official plan to community commercial policy area with an exception. And uh, from for the zoning bylaw is to uh, add an exception to the commercial highway zone for this uh, property. Uh, it's because the use of a research center is not permitted in the community uh, commercial policy area of the official plan, and it's yeah, neither permitted in the commercial highway area. So we have to add the exception for this property. It's not for the whole uh, designation or for the whole zone. It's only for this property. So it's located on uh, Main Street West. Uh, when you uh, go out of the town, uh, at the west side of the town. It's a vacant land and uh, it's located uh, near the old paper mill CIP. This uh, property is located in front on the north part of the property. Uh, at the east of the property, there are some shops that are uh, businesses that are allowed in the commercial highway zone, such as a swimming pool distributor and car garages. Uh, there is also the town's uh, water treatment plant. At the south of the, this property, we find a residential density 2 or 2 zone uh, that is not uh, built yet. And then uh, further uh, south, we found a built po residential pocket of the same uh, zone, so R2 zone. It's a uh, pole crescent. Uh, finally, at the west of this pro property, uh, directly adjacent to the site, we find the right of way of the Chartrand Avenue. And then we find another, the other lots are zone commercial highway and uh, there is only a single detached house, uh, which is zone commercial highway, so it's a uh, grandfathered use. And at the far west of the, the property, there is the Hydro Oxbury Transformer substation. So in the official plan, we can see that the land is located here and it's surrounded by uh, lands that have the same designation, which is community commercial policy area. And uh, in the zoning bylaw, it's the same thing. It's part of a, a commercial highway zone. So this application was received on September 6, 2022, and the uh, 
the notice were, was published and sent to the neighbors in a 120 meters perimeter uh, on September 9th. Um, and uh, my report to the Council it will be presented on October 11, 2022, and there will be a 20 days appeal period uh, prescribed by the Planning Act uh, that starts at the publication at the date of publication of the decision notice. So thank you for your uh, participation and I will let Mrs. Lontan read the legal declaration concerning the appeal rights. Thank you. Thank you. This public meeting is required by the Planning Act as and is intended to provide an opportunity for people to have their comments and concerns heard concerning the proposed amendment to the zoning bylaw. If a person or public body would otherwise have an ability to appeal the decision of the Municipal Council of the Town of Hawkesbury to the local planning appeal tribunal, but the person or public body does not make oral submissions at a public meeting or make written submissions to the Town of Hawkesbury before the bylaw is passed, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision. If a person or public body does not make oral submissions at a public meeting or make written submissions to the Town of Hawkesbury before the bylaw is passed, the person or public body may not be added as a party to the hearing of an appeal before the local planning appeal tribunal unless, in the opinion of the tribunal, there are reasonable grounds to do so. Only individuals, corporations, and public bodies may appeal a bylaw to the local planning appeal tribunal. A notice of appeal may not be filed by an an uncorporated association or group. However, a notice of appeal may be filed in the name of an individual who is a member of the association or the group on its behalf. No person or public body sh shall be added as a party to the hearing of the appeal unless, but before the bylaw was passed, the person or public body made oral submissions at a public meeting or in written submissions to the council or in the opinion of the tribunal, there are reasonable grounds to add the person or public body as a party. Thank you. At this moment, I would like to ask the uh, person representing the developer. I do not have his name. You mean my, my name? Yes, yeah, please. Yeah. My name is Ping Long. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so I are you come from the Montreal. Yeah. And you are representing the owner of the property? Oh, uh, yes. I, uh, yeah, I plan to, uh, to buy that land and then I want to build a, a fiber optic research and development center in that uh, in that place. Yes, continue please. Uh, yeah, so I because uh, that's why I want to because that room is more is the right now is the we call the highway commercial, so it's not included in the research and development center. So we want to change that one to 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 add this research and the development center in that zone in the highway commercial zone. Very well. So basically, what you're saying is you would like to purchase this land in order to build a research and development center. Am I correct? Yeah. Yes, yes, that's correct. OK, thank you. Um, do you have more comments that you would like to add? Uh, you said uh, I can give the presentation. If you allow me to give one presentation. Excuse me, Madame Cordani, uh, peut-être que vous avez mieux compris? Yes, uh, I, do you have a presentation, Mr. Pinlong, that you want to share with us? Yes, yes. OK, well, you can share your screen uh, with the share button that is located on top of your uh, of your screen right to the microphone button. OK. Mm. 
we can see your screen so you can start your presentation. Can you, can, can you see yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. So uh, my presentation, Fiber Optic Research and uh, Development Center, Hotsbury. Uh, my name is Ping Long from OE Land, our company located in Lhasa, Quebec. Lhasa is the one uh, city of the Montreal. So this is uh, my email address and uh, phone number. So uh, OE Land uh, introduction. OE Land established in the 1997, and uh, we are focused on the fiber optics product, manufacture, design, and uh, market. So right now we have about uh, 25 people in Montreal area, and uh, our market uh, is uh, worldwide. So 19 more than 95 percent is export out of the Canada. Uh, maybe United States about 60 percent, European and Asia 20 about 20 percent each. So uh, here's our product. Our product are most, uh, uh, I will divide it into several categories. First one is the fiber product grading product. This is one of our core technology. So we are, we are the, in this product, we are the industry leaders. So and this product will be widely used in the telecommunication. And uh, I think everybody knows the uh, Nortel before and also Bell. Uh, this is uh, use one fiber as the so one fiber, maybe more than one million people can speak through one fiber. So this is uh, one of the important uh, components for fiber optic <coughs> and the communication. So our second uh, product. Uh, Line is the laser and the light source. So we make uh, many different uh, laser and light source from the UV to mid infrared. So since this is uh, very specialized, so I don't want to go too much details. So third one is the mid infrared photonics product. So this is more 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 for the uh, defense, military, or biomedical application. We also have the fiber sensor and the solutions like the temporary sensor, pressure sensor, humidity sensor, and the accelerator sensor, etc. We also have some OEM product for the more like that we provide some uh, key components for other uh, companies. We call the OEM or key uh, tanky solutions. We also have a passive fiber optic components. It's also for many like telecom or other industry applications. <coughs> and uh, since last year, we developed what's called the COVID-19 disinfection system. Basically, I uh, use uh, UV laser to disinfect uh, COVID-19 virus. So this is a project was supported by the Innovation Canada. And uh, right now we are <coughs> have developed one is called the IL disinfection system and the surface disinfection system. So our this system is very advantageous. And uh, right now we're still looking for some uh, people to try to use it. Uh, one reason is because this uh, system is a little bit ex expensive. So uh, still need some uh, time and, uh, and uh, to 
forgettable applications. So this system can be widely used like the uh, government buildings, hospitals, restaurants, and uh, <coughs> like gyms or other um, public areas. Now I uh, try to talk a little bit more about the five optical product process. So we can see from here uh, we have the UV laser after face mask. This is the optical fiber. So we use UV laser uh, to to produce the fiber product gratings. So you can see. This process <coughs> is only is only few little. It's a UV laser. We don't I have nothing else. So this is the bottom is finished product. We have the period structure in the fiber core. So this one can be used as a functional uh, devices. So this is uh, for example we have a lot of uh, signal goes through, so you can choose one from the then come back, the rest pass through. For example, this is the uh, wide uh, spectrum, so we can fill the one narrow spectrum out uh, backward, the rest will be continued. So this is more like that you have a lot of people talking in the wide spectrum, so you can feel the one or, <coughs> or, or, or part of it. So to some people, so, so that means all the people can share the one fiber to make phone calls through one fiber. So fiber optical product process, we use a laser to change the fiber core index. So only this is only a physical process, no chemical involvement. No noise generated, very quiet. Environment friendly process, and uh, it is a green industry product. So, uh, Fiber Optical Research and Development Center. So, at the first year, we plan to hire five people, high quality job will be created. And in the next three years, we will be about 15 jobs will be created in locally. So and uh, we also hope our new research center will attract more high tech companies from Montreal to Ottawa to locate it to the Hawkesbury. So I think the because Hawkesbury is very uh, is like the uh, gateway between Ottawa and the Montreal. So we think this have the big potential. Area. So this is uh, uh, the building we plan to build, Fiber Optical Research and Development Center. <coughs> As I said before, this is no any environment. This is only physical process. No any uh, <coughs> chemicals. No uh, pollutions. It's green, uh, green, uh, green energy and uh, green industry. So this is our about 6,000 square feet will be buildings and we divide it into four units, about the 16 parking lot. So I said we will build a, a, a nice environment and uh, we'll be start operating in next year. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Long. Um, I have uh, Mr. Tsurunakis who would like to ask a question. Go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, I have a question on your uh, product for uh, COVID-19 disinfection. Uh, I believe that's a new product that you developed recently, obviously. Oh, yes, because right now most uh, uh, people for the COVID-19 disruption and the classic uh, uh, traditional way is use the UV uh, uh, lamp. 
So now, um, recent years, people use the UV LED, but UV LED have some disadvantages. First of all, it's very low power. If, for example, if for, for the large buildings, so and uh, it's not uh, possible because airflow is very, uh, very uh, strong, so very big. So that's why you need a more powerful UV light source. So this is why we use the UV laser. Also, plus we use the UV laser is the post, and it's the just like uh, in the very short time, short post, but high energy, just like the high speed uh, bullet can it can kill the UV virus right away. So right now this is, I said this is still a new 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 product and a new new project. So we also applied the, the, for the patent, US, uh, US patent for this product. So we, we hopefully is, is anyone the else, started to- Is anyone else making that product? Soon. Is anyone else making that product or are you the only ones? Mr. Turnakis, I, uh, I just don't want to cut on your uh, question uh, because the, the, the COVID product really has nothing to do with the zoning change. And the official plan. So um, oh, I think it would be more important that Mr. Uh, Long, uh, if he could provide us with a copy of his presentation, if we have questions for him, we can ask him the questions. Um, however, we, you know, at this point in time, we're looking at changes in zoning and official plan. So uh, we can ask more detailed uh, questions uh, outside this particular meeting. Uh, are there Mr. Long, will other, you provide us with a copy? Yes, yes, I can send to the uh, solicitor. A solicitor can uh, distribute to 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 uh, all of you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you very yeah. much, Mr. Chirunak. Do you have another question? Yeah, just a different question. I mean, that question was just so that I wanted to see what type of firm uh, you know they came up with a product on their own. So it's research and development. So I wanted to see if that was in house or not. But that's fine. My uh, my second question is, um, how did you decide to relocate to uh, Hawkesbury? What advantages did you see that Hawkesbury was giving you uh, versus other locations? Is it uh, because it's located uh, in Ontario and that's a gateway for you uh, to develop in Ontario? I think uh, uh, several advantages. First, I said that uh, Hawkesbury is the gateway between the Ottawa and Montreal. Actually, we have a lot of uh, uh, our company have a lot of interactions with the Ottawa, like the NRC and the University of Ottawa and the Calgary University, and also there's uh, also especially the NRC. So we have a lot of uh, interactions there. So and uh, I think the hospital is just uh, right be in the middle of the Montreal and the Ottawa. So I think this uh, also. Uh, Another advantage is because right now, if we move to Ottawa, it's, I think it's very expensive. So everything is expensive. So if we like the uh, rent, also the buildings are more expensive. So I think also, uh, so that's why we prefer to uh, locate in the Hawkesbury. Also, it's much, you see, if I go to the Hawkesbury from Montreal and take me just uh, one hour and I can come back, uh, if I go in the morning, I can come back in, in the noon. So you see, it's not a one day trip, it's a half a day trip. So half a day, I can make uh, something happens and I come back in my job. So it's half a day. So, yeah. Perfect, thank you. Just a moment, uh, Mr. Campbell, you have a question regarding the zoning and planning. Yes, I'd like to ask Madame Cordonnier if there was any objection or any comments from citizens for that. Thank you for your question, you. Mr. Campbell. Uh, we did not receive any comments or question uh, for this project or for this public meeting. We did not ever receive uh, any request to participate in the public meeting. I also wanted to add that this project will be uh, subject to a site plan agreement. So every other aspect of the zoning bylaw will have to be respected and uh, the agreement will be signed to ensure that there is no uh, negative impact on the adjacent properties. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? If there are no questions, I think 
Uh, Est-ce que vous avez d'autres commentaires, Madame Cordonnier? Any comments? No, I don't. I just want to mention that this my report will be presented to Council on October 11, 2022. So if anybody wants to submit a letter or any comments or any question, it has to be done before the week of October 10th. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, very much, Mr. Long. We uh, wait to have received copies of your presentation. At this point okay. in time, we are now at the adjournment and therefore I need a proposer and a seconder to adjourn the meeting. Uh, Mr. Lefebvre will propose, Mr. Campbell will second. All in favor? And it's adopted. Thank you very much and uh, we'll see you at the next meeting in October. Well, thanks, Wiley, well, good morning. Have a good night, good Mr. Good night. Long. Good night, good night. Thank you, Mr. Yes, Long. Yes, good night. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you, bye.